our final year project was split into two separate sections. One involved a uh, point mutagenesis on GFP protein to change its fluorescence, and the other was a uh, to build a, a scale model of the HRAS protein out of ball and stick molecules. Immunogenesis was to mutate specific amino acids on the chromophore TFP so that when we expressed it and uh, used it in the fluorescence that the, the, fluorescence, the fluorescence would be changed from the wild type TFP we used as a control. HRAS was downstream signaling effector. It, uh, Help it controls the cell for like proliferation, cell survival, apoptosis, and stuff like that. Uh, there's once it becomes mutated, there's three mutation points: 12, 13, and 32. I think is the last one. Which, if they get mutated, turns with turns RAS oncogenic. So it, when GDP binds to it, it gets stuck in an on state, which currently sends out signals for the cell to proliferate, which so is the like. So that causes the cell to become like oncogenic and cancerous. Right, so uh, the second part of our, of our project was to create a model of uh, HRAS and to do this we had to basically start out with making backbones and side chains and that would be also at that. So for making the model we had to figure out all the different amino acids that were in it, order all the pieces and then we set the work. The backbone we, if, of the chain it was with, uh, one triangle carbon, one alpha carbon and one oxygen. There was uh, five alpha helices. Yeah. So we built them all, we built all the apoheleses and then we started putting the side chains on. We had the entire like protein itself split up into sections. For the loops and turns, we had to use a pine ball, which is a PDB viewer, which is a benefit of the orientation of all the loops and turns, where the double bonds, where the hydrogen bonds went on, and the amino acid itself. Uh, building the beta sheets was basically, we just kind of took it as two backbones together, worked, worked them out, got them parallel or anti-parallel, which is just the orientation of how the hydro bonds the cross. And then we just, I'd say we had everything numbered. Well, we had it all sectioned out, like our alpha helixes and our beta sheets and our loops. So we had the whole thing built, you know, in sections, we labelled them as well. So once we got to put it together, we just started at the beginning. It started with one of the beta sheets. So we put that up and then connected that to this, the second one. And once we got it all aligned perfect and with the, the temporary stand, we made a box out of wood and drilled holes where the poles should have went and transferred the model from the temporary stand over to the permanent stand. And um, what do you think of the finished model? It's yeah. great, Jane. Yeah. We're great for like a teaching tool, I always think, because it's really physical. Like it shows just how the, the molecule works. Eh? And it was good for a presentation as well, because we, we made a wee mac, a wee molecule of GTP as well to bind you. And, uh, so we could actually put the GTP molecule in to show the switch regions in RAS as well. This, like to show exactly which amino acid gets mutated when, when it gets switched on or switched off. I mean it was a really good tool just for, it was something different when we were doing our presentations. Mm. And even from standing up looking down you could still see lecturers who were focusing on this model because everyone else just had the same presentation. Whereas we had something that we had this in the video which are two different things. That really took the pressure off you too because they were looking at the model and yeah. you. So <laughs> it just really helped you present. We learned everything about it, right? <laughs> and amino acids. And amino acids, yeah. But uh, that was a really good learning tool because of when you're looking at proteins in a book, it's only a 2D picture, so they're going to kind of show you what they want. Yeah. And when we were building this, we were noticing that there's like a, one, one specific large gap in RAS that in a book, unless they want you to highlight that point, you're not going to see it. But when you have a 3D model, you can understand protein structure far better. Adds another dimension to learn it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. If we would have had done this like a year ago, even if we were doing like proteins in college, then they just seem far more easier once you're doing the modeling. Because we just, like the picture an amino acid, without actually seeing it, you don't know what it is, sort of, you know, it's just a chemical. Like, but then, once we've made them, like you can physically know what they look like, you know. So it's really good for like, seeing what you're learning, you know, grasping sort of the, the physical nature of biochemistry rather than just reading it. It's terrible. Yeah, other fourth year projects it seemed a lot more interactive or something. You know, like if the other people in our class just seemed to be in labs all the time, it seemed really monotonous what they were doing. I know it was, it was really interesting what they were doing in the end up, but like some days it just seemed really boring really. Well, I mean, it, it was something different. When you're 
we had like an hour or two hour incubation period in the lab, it was something else to kind of, instead of waiting around or going for coffee or whatever like that, you could just easily go down, build this, help, help the understanding. I mean, in working with the wet lab, it was perfect. I thought yeah. it was really, really good. Balance it's itself out, good. As, as a teaching tool, it was perfect. I mean, you understand protein structure far better. And this part of it, it was a break. It was a good crack to build it. It wasn't like going to school, do school work, you know. It wasn't a stress on you to build a molecule, it was sort of like building a model when you're younger or something. It was a good crack like for yourself, you know.